Okay, so the question says if Emily eats 12 cookies, which represents 25% of the bag, that gives us a lot of information about how to set this up. The question is how many cookies are in the bag? So I know that my answer is going to have to be about the total number of cookies in the bag, right? And this is a part whole ratio because by part of the bag is the 12 cookies and that equals how much in the percent? 25. And we know that percents are always out of how much? 100. And that's going to relate to what you're doing in the rest of class today for part of our problems. Um, what's my unknown then? It goes back to what the question says. How many cookies are in the... And it's asking about the total number of cookies, isn't it? Or the whole of the bag? So that's where we can put our X or C or Y or whatever your favorite variable is. And then how can I cross multiply this? What's across from each other? So 12 times 100, I don't even need a calculator for that. That's just going to be 1200, right? Is equal to 25 times X. And I can cross multiply by just showing if I loop these together, these two equal this and these two equal this. Then I'm going to take 1200 and divide it by what? Okay, well, yes, I teach math, but I use calculators too. I could do long division, but I don't want to. 1,200 divided by 25, what'd you guys get? Okay, 48. And as soon as somebody up front here said 48, they were like, oh, there was a totally easier way of doing this. Yeah, what's the easier way? What do we know about 25%? And I can show this if I wanted to do it like in a bar model. If this is my whole bag, and each section of it is 25%. Why is each section 25%? Because it's telling us we have 25% and we know how many 25% make up a whole? Four. Four. If one of those 25% is 12, how much is each of the other 25%? 12, 12, 12. I could add those or I could have just said four times 12 equals 48. So just different ways of doing it. I put this part whole as a hint here because I wanted you guys to think about this as a proportion and cross multiplying. It's what we've been doing in class. Is it the only way to solve this problem? No. no. You can be flexible with your numbers and doing what you know. Okay, let's take a look real quick at number two. Use the graph to answer the questions. What does 6120 represent? Well, if I need to find out what my six is, what does it go with? Weeks. Okay, so I know 6 stands for weeks. And what does the what 20 then represent? Okay, so earned babysitting. That means in six weeks' time, somebody earned what? So I can go back to my in six weeks. She earned, he earned, I earned. Do we know who this problem's about? I would say earned... $120 babysitting. We have no idea who, but we can find out a lot of information about what they're doing from this graph, right? What ordered pair describes the unit rate? What's the unit rate always over? One. Where does this fall for one? So what's my ordered pair? One comma 20. quick question that's going to lead into what part of our rotation today. One, is this graph proportional? Yeah. Is it a straight line going through the origin? Isn't that the question we have to ask? Yeah. It's a straight line that's going through the origin. So yes, this is proportional. And if it's proportional, we have to look at the same place here. And this space that we looked at the 1 comma 20 is going to tell us our unit rate, isn't it? What's our unit rate? $20 for one week. That means our slope is 20 over one for our rise over run, okay?